One of the novels that was turned into a film is, is Lottie. And very excited that tonight, over at the historic Embassy Theater in Fort Wayne, they'll be screening the 1940s version of Lottie. That will be very exciting. Of course we know Jean Strang for her best for her nature books, but she was also a pioneer in the world of filmmaking. When a medium was just being explored as an art form, and Hollywood's studio system was just beginning. It really was one of the most exciting times to be making movies. It didn't take long for the uh, studios to realize that there was potential in Jean Strang and Porter's books and how they could be adapted to films. After offering Gene um, to have creative input on the script, Paramount Film Fred was 1970. The uh, experience was not a positive one for Gene. Her script suggestions were ignored by the studios, and she vowed not to allow any ad adaptations of her, film, of her books into films unless she had creative control. But how did she go about ha having this creative control? She, uh, being a person who would not shy away from innovation and independence, created her own production company. You see, a couple years after moving to California in 1919, Jean Stratton Porter had allowed Thomas Innes and the director James Leo Meehan, who would later become her son-in-law, to adapt Michael Halloran. During the production, Jean Stratton Porter oversaw every aspect of filmmaking, arriving on the set early and usually being the last person to leave. And having a change of heart for filmmaking, she began working on A Girl of the Limberlost independently after forming the Gene Stratton Porter Productions in 1924. It was truly amazing that she was able to start her own production company when you remember that women had just gained the right to vote four years prior. As a film historian and collector and a guy that has to introduce these films all the time, I, uh, I run across the same questions a lot. And one of them is, uh, is this color and sound, and uh, can you relate it to anything that we know? And uh, here's an answer to that. This is black and white, and the sound has a lot of hiss in it. It's from 1940, uh, but it sounds pretty good for 1940. And can we relate it to anything that we know? Well, sure. Uh, there are some people in this that you might know. If you're a fan of uh, uh, Gone with the Wind, you'll notice Rand Brooks. Uh, Scarlett's first husband is in this film, and uh, you'll also notice if you're a, if you're a Star Wars or a Frankenstein fan, the guy who shows up at the end of this is Peter Cushing, uh, who's the long lost son. And, uh, you will find him in this. He was in just a few roles in the United States before he had to go back to England at the beginning of World War One. Now the other question I get is, why do you say all these year movies, and where did you get this? So that one too. Uh, this movie comes from Albion, Indiana, in the library, and it was a 1960s reprint of this film, and it was going stinky. Uh, this is triacetate safety film, so it's not going to explode, but it was turning vinegar syndrome and having lots of problems, and I looked at it and I said, you guys got about six months before this is going to die. And they said, well, why don't you take it? I did, and I did some preservation steps that I can talk to you about if you want to know about film preservation. And I managed to stop that, and I put about $30 worth of splicing tape in it to fix all the old cracks and uh, abrasions of the film. And, yay, it's runnable again. Uh, for a number of rights reasons, this cannot be shown on TCM. Uh, it is not currently available on video. Yes, there is a print at Library of Congress, and I tried really hard to get that because since this is 16 millimeter and not 35 millimeter, the 16 millimeter isn't as nice, but we could not get the 35 millimeter because there are all kinds of rights issues and stipulations and red tape that I could not get through at Library of Congress. But someday, maybe, we'll be able to do that because this would be an ideal venue for that. Now, I have a collection, as has been said, of about seven more Gene Stratton Porter movies. For some reason, and I suspect that this has to do with Jeanette, uh, her daughter, they all have various rights problems and things that keep certain things from being run and certain things not being run. And it's probably all a bunch of contract problems, but we can talk about that in the lobby later if you'd like. Okay, that being said, uh, 
I'd like to thank you, and we'll run the movie, but I'd also like to give a good plug to Cletus here, who has discovered that we have the score for the 1928 version of Laddie, which no longer survives, but he does have the music for it, and so he's going to transport us off into the world of Gene Stratton Porter by playing the original music from Laddie. Thank you.